Simon, Jamie, Jimmy, Adriana, thank you for taking the time to, to speak to us. I was just telling you before we started recording that you know we would have done this earlier on, but it's been such a, a busy period since you all arrived at the club. Uh, before we get going, do you want to just each individually introduce yourself, Simon, if we start with yourself? Yep, Simon Island, Huddersfield Town fan, ex-Huddersfield Town player, current set-piece coach. Jimmy Shan, first-team coach. James Smith, first-team coach. Adriano Bass, coach and goalkeeper, first team. Simon, if we, we start with yourself, uh, Huddersfield Town fan, you introduce yourself as supporters will remember you from your playing days. Here. That must be fond memories for yourself. Oh, yeah, uh, the fondest, really. You know, starting in as a schoolboy, 14, um, went to school at All Saints up the road. Myself and Kev Kevin Donovan, obviously, the next Huddersfield Town player as well in the same year. So we joined at the same time and, uh, and came through the youth ranks together. Um, played together in the first team. So, yeah, I've got fond memories of the football club. Um, Adriano, we're not going to forget you, but we'll come on to, to Jamie and Jimmy um, first. You two tend to work a little bit closer with Darren, is that fair to say? You two more direct assistants? Yeah, yeah, that's what you could, you could call it that, yeah. So what does that entail in, in terms of what your individual roles are? So, um, mainly in the mornings or the, the day before the gaffer wall, uh, highlight what he wants to work on uh, during the during the session of, of, of the day, and then he'll give us give us that information. Me and Jimmy will then deliver, plan and deliver uh, what the gaffer wants, mainly on a on a day to day training basis. And we've seen you as well, uh, Jimmy, in, in inside training sessions where you, you're obviously in the thick of things. You split the group up a little bit. You you know, it's one of the things that, that the gaffer actually brought up is that he likes being able to break the group down into digestible sessions and, and get messages across that, that perhaps is, is easy to take on board in that way. Yeah, I think it's for the contact time as well. You know, obviously, if there's 20 players, if we have two groups of 10, it means there's going to be more ball contact time, more time for repetition, to repeat, to rehearse. Um, you know, and obviously to aid the intensity as well. So that's why we split the groups as, as often as regularly as we as we do. On a match day as well, you two tend to split a little bit, don't you? I, I get to see that because I sit in the, the press box near you. But what's the idea behind that? Then do, you, do some of you want to see some of the analysis side of it and then be able to take on the shape work and then go and feed that back in the second half? Yeah, well, kind of my role is the first 25, 30 minutes to sit in the stand. Obviously, it's an emotional detachment. You get a better viewpoint from, from being up in the, on the gantry um, and to work closely with the analysis boys. You know, I mean, making sure that I get to re rerun the clips and rerun the footage. So if there's an aspect of the game where Jamie radios up to me or a message from the gaffer to, to Jamie, have a look at X, Y and Z, I, I can do that. Um, and then just trying to formulate some visuals, some clips at half time for the, for the players to see. Jamie, obviously, that's a relationship that not just you two, but you four, you five, even um, including Darren in that, have built up over a, a long time now. It's, this isn't the first time you've you've worked together. That must help you guys not only day to day working with one another, knowing your personalities, knowing each other's roles, but getting those messages through to the lads and, and that working relationship as well. Yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a plus. You know, I've worked with Jimmy and I for over t over ten years, uh, and the gaffer the same. You know, starting up West Brom. Uh, we, you know where we work together, and we we kind of we, we know what each other you know wants. Um, so I'll read, I'll speak to Jimmy you know on a match day, and I'll tell him about a clip that I'm that I'm after, and he'll know exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. So having that close relationship and working relationship that we've had over the time, and then obviously with Adriano and Simon, uh, you know it works works well. It, it kind of makes sense with, with two Brummies where you two will have come across each other well with the gaffer and Simon and yourself, you're all linked to Huddersfield, but Adriano, where does uh, your path intersect with these guys? Yeah, um, I think I started with, with Gaff um, two, two years ago. Um, he, he went to change the staff in, in Sheffield Wednesday, then he contacted me. And um, so I joined, I joined them and we have two good seasons there. And Thank God we are here now, you know, with this great opportunity. Goalkeeping specialist, obviously. Um, we had Lee Nichols in uh, doing a, a press conference recently and he spoke really glowingly about yourself, about you wanting to try and push him, bring his game on a little bit. Is that something that excites you? Obviously, that it's not a bad start point with Lee in terms of how good he is. Yeah, we're always trying to, to push the players to perform at the highest, you know, that they can. Um, obviously require a lot of work, a lot of training, you know, so we find them one level and we think that like, we can push you to the next level now, you understand? And uh, my focus and concentration is only add to what they already got, something 
to, to help them not just achieve our goal as a group, but his personal uh, I say goals as well. It makes sense that you're part of this group as well, because Darren's spoken a lot about the fact that he wants the goalkeeping section of the, the coaching and, and what you guys to feed in head to how the overall team plays. Is that, is that fair to say to all of you? There's a it, People can often think of goalkeeping as an individual uh, task within a team game, but you guys try and integrate that a little bit more. Yeah, no, I, th I think yeah, I think obviously the, the goalkeeping coach back in the day would be working in isolation and just looking after the goalkeepers where... Darren, from our previous club, we be out from the back. You know, we wanted to control the game and dominate from from the back. And obviously, a goalkeeper is a, a key role in that aspect. So, um, you know, we we discuss as a staff on our building phases and obviously include the goalkeeping department within that. Obviously, there's a, a really obvious specialisation with yourself, Adriano. Your job title, um, Simon, has set pieces within it. Yeah. Is there anything that you two, Jamie and Jimmy, specialise in, especially, uh, especially specialise in, but is there anything that you guys take control of and in, in previous coaching regimes and things is build-up specialists, defensive specialists, attacking specialists? Is there any breakdown in that sort of a way or how does it work for you two? Yeah, I mean, generally, uh, one of us will work in possession and one of us will work out of possession. You know, during during the week, so you can have a, you know a real clear focus as a coach just on one you know one aspect of it. Um, whilst also helping and supporting, you know, with the, with the other the other aspect. And does it obviously? I've I've never been a coach. Does it work in the same way that a, a non-footballing job would, where you obviously have your specialisations, and at the top of that tree, Darren chips in and, and oversees all of it, has the the final say on each department and and what he wants from from you guys to do. Yeah, obviously, the, 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 you know, the gaffer has the, the final say and, and directs, you know, what he wants, you know, from, from a day-to-day -day basis. Jimmy, that seems like quite a collaborative process though with Darren. He, he seems quite willing to take your ideas on. You know, we, we see you when we do inside training or when we're there on a match day as well, how much he talks and how much he's, he seems to value what you guys have to say, which makes sense given he's brought you all here with him. Yeah, I think, I think it's one message. Obviously, our job is to deliver the gaffer's message to the best of our ability. So we have lots of session briefing meetings. We discuss a lot of the staff. We spend a lot of time you know, probably beyond 6pm at the football club discussing what we're going to do the next day. So we are clear with his vision and what he wants. And our job is to execute that to the best of our ability. Simon, where does your role fit into all of that? Obviously, people look at set pieces and... Um... Yeah. My, my role is to control Adriano Basso on a daily basis. <laughs> That's my role. And especially on a match day. <laughs> where he can get quite animated on the sidelines. So that's my only job, just control Basso. That's what the gaffer says. Uh, Basso, are you the, the, the character then in the coach's room? Is that your job? Are you ahead uh, of chief mischief? Yeah, I'm always looking for lifting people up, you know, always press people, trying to do their best, you know, and uh, sometimes exaggerate a little bit. <laughs> and these guys control, but it's all about passion, the desire to win, you know, so... Um, I don't accept people not giving their best, you understand, when they can. Um, I don't accept to leave a game when you think like, you could do better, you could do more, you could give more and you didn't. So that for me is very frustrating. And uh, I, I'm not, as a coach, I think like if allowed, they, normally, they will do it in this way. They sometimes want an easy way to do. And uh, I should make sure that they're not, not going to be easy. You have to do it. You have to work, you understand? And uh, that's why I always shout in. <laughs> and he does shout, by the way. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> How does that work with, with a character like Lee Nichols? And Lee's obviously quite a calm player and you want your goalkeepers to be calm. How do you, how do you get that passion but make sure that he's not nervous or, or taking these emotions too far at all? Yeah, you have to understand each other first, you know, and see with those who you can be more hard and those you can be, you understand, you have to look. I see Lee and Max, because of their experience, you know, you don't need to shout much, you don't need to be, you understand, you don't need to demand much from them because once they step here, they really, really want to work hard. So if they are willing to work hard, you know, my job become easier. And I see them as experienced player. Uh, sometimes, in terms of how I say, um, motivate them is easier. You understand because they really wanted to achieve something. I want to achieve something as well. So I always, when I first came, I say to them, "Say this: your success depend on what I do, and uh, my success depend on what you do. So we don't let each other down. We work hard for it." 
that's interesting to hear. Um, Simon, sorry, Adriano stole your limelight a little bit. I imagine that's not the first time that's happened. Your no, role, all the last, but. <laughs> your role in, in set pieces, and what does that entail? What's your work? Is it is it a lot of opposition scouting? Is it all internal? How does how does that feel? Yeah, in? a little bit of everything. Obviously, support the, the coaches and um, on a daily basis in terms of the, the general training, and then obviously, you know, in terms of the importance of set pieces, both for and against, is is obviously to analyse the um, the opposition. You know, see what their strengths are, their weaknesses. See if there's any areas that we can exploit from there. Because, like I said, dead ball situations are becoming more and more, and always have been in the championship. You know, important areas to score goals. You know, and obviously areas where you don't want to concede goals as well. What is it about that area of the game that interests you? Then you, it must be. I'm assuming it's something you're interested in to have to to do it day in day out. Yeah, it just just because you know, like it is is a specialist area, as uh, you know, like and the, the, like I said, the importance of it has increased. You know, I'm not sure what the percentage of goals conceded or scored, but it is quite high. You usually, find that the teams that are quite successful, you know, certainly when we were looking at, at Sheffield Wednesday, you know, the the, the teams that concede the least or, and, and have a good goal scoring ratio from scoring are usually the teams up at the top. You know, so there is a, a, a correlation there between being successful there and being successful in general in the league. So, and the gaffer, you know, I've known the gaffer for, we played together at Doncaster for, for 26, 27 years now, you know, and what he wants to do is make sure that he's covered everything, you know, not just, you know, obviously he wants a, a philosophy and a style of play, but obviously you've got to make sure that all the areas of the game are being covered from goalkeeping to outfield to in and out possession to, to the set pieces. Um, this is a, a question for all of you, just building on what Simon said there, speaking about Darren. What's he like to work with? Obviously, he must be somebody you guys enjoy working with, given how much you've done it uh, at this point in your careers. But he obviously comes across to supporters and the cells is really well measured, uh, really in control of his own emotions and, and how he feels. But what's he like behind the scenes with you guys? Is he a, a motivator? Is he on top of you or does he tend to be a bit hands off and, and leave you to what you're doing? Well, I mean, as to, I, I mean, as a, when he was a player, he's very similar as a, as, a, as a player he is to a manager. He's very calm and very, you know, he wasn't, um, he, he was very, you know, always a deep thinker about the game, you know, not one really to go around and, and be, you know, throwing his, his weight around or anything like that kind of thing, but would always very, very professional about, you know, how prepared for the games to make sure he got the best out of, out of the, the tools that he had as a, as a player. And, you know, we going in and working with him at Sheffield Wednesday was the first time. Obviously, we worked against each other when I was at, at QPR and Forrest when he was at, um, when he was at uh, West Brom. So we came across each other. When I actually came to work with him at Sheffield Wednesday, he was the same person, very d diligent in terms of how he went around things, very thoughtful, very, very caring, you know, and, um, and wanted to, to, to get to the top of the game, which he did as a player and, and, and wants to do as a coach. Is that the same experience that the rest of you have with Darren? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, say so like Simon said there, his, his man management, you know, is, is excellent. Um, he's got a real trust in his in us as staff. You know, um, when we spoke about it, you know, he has the, he has the final say on things, but also he does listen. You know, he does listen to to what we say and take on board. You know, might not always ag agree, but you know, it does uh, it does listen. So he's yeah. It's healthy to have a relationship, though, where being able to, to challenge and push is, is part of that, though, isn't it? It's part of that trust process. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. That's our, that's our job, is to, is to challenge and, and, and push as well, yeah. And does that mean that, I think, broad speaking and maybe you know, looking at a, a bigger picture, you must all see the game and how you want coaching to go and how you want the, the football to be played broadly similar? Yeah, for definite. I think so, yeah. I mean, that's, you can only work as a team when it's, when it's like that. You know, and, and we'll have honest conversations in terms of, you know, when, when our games have gone, both when they've gone well and when they haven't gone well. But, you know, we've, we've, we've all got a common philosophy in terms of how we want to see the game being played. And we're always working towards that, you know, and, you know, and, you know, what we'd like to do is, uh, you know, is, is get that philosophy across here at Uddersfield Town, because we feel if we can, then we'll see that, the, you know, the club start to, to get to where it should belongs that's really obviously encouraging to hear but um how does that not work in a practical sense and you guys you know the, is that the meeting side of it is that the theoretical side of it i think people 
might think or, or assume that a lot of the coaching is done on the grass, but that's not the case in the modern times as much. There's as much office-based stuff and theoretical stuff as there is actual training these days, isn't there? Yeah, I think the, the hardest part for us is, is coming in mid-season. You know, so normally all your principles and your methods are done in the first six weeks, seven, six, seven weeks of pre-season. And we've missed that opportunity. Obviously, in pre-season, it's about getting the players physically conditioned as well. So you can afford maybe double session, uh, treble sessions per day. We've not been afforded that. We come in, I think we had three games in the first, in the first, you know, first week. Um, so we are very much, or the manager is very much of a mindset of it's a learning environment. And regardless of your age and stage in your career, he wants to improve you, make you better. As do we as staff, we want to grow as staff. So we try and pinch as, as much time as we possibly can to educate the players. So from a player's perspective, I'd imagine that they might think there's probably more classroom-based sessions than maybe they've previously been, been used to. It's just a clever way of us trying to pinch. So every single day as a coaching staff, we'll review the session. We'll look back at the session. The session's filmed. We utilise the analysis team to, to analyse and, and paint up the, pic, the, the, the clip so the picture's a little bit clearer. Um, and that coincides with our, with our methods on working on the grass. So it's just about trying to be clever and trying to you know try and pinch as much contact time with the players as you possibly can. And the facility at the football club allows us to do that with the, with the classroom. That's obviously... Um the first team first and foremost but you guys have had a look at the B team you had a look at the 19s it's the the entire club and the entire pathway of everyone that's here that's that's part of your thinking part of your coaching as well yeah we've all we think we've all come from from an academy background you know in terms of coaching so that's going to be you know it's a strong passion of ours to to make sure we we look at the youth departments and, and try and get as many young players in and around as we possibly can. Adriano's, you know, permanently got two to three young goalkeepers with him because he feels that environment of being in and around with the seniors and then thrusted into to working with the first team players will enhance their development. So, um, yeah, we're all we're all keen on that. And I think, you know, because we've all come from that pathway, there's nothing better than having one of your own through your own system in your first team. And you look at our current squad now, you know, there's lots and lots of B team players in there. Um, with the injury record, some of that might be via necessity, but they're in and around there, and you know we've got to we've got to take great pride as coaches that we're adding to their development on a day to day basis. And it's important for Huddersfield to have you know it's always been a club that's produced one of their own. You know, in years gone by, you know it, you know the supporters like players that identify with the football club, especially Huddersfield. You know. Is that something that you find, uh, you know, your knowledge of the football club then, the fact that you've been here before, the fact that, you know, you're, you're a supporter, does that help you emotionally to kind of get across what you know supporters are after, what you know the, the football club stands for and is about and almost helps you, you know, help the, the new lads bed into that? Yeah, I, I guess it does. There's also an added pressure with it as well because it is, you know, it is the, the, the team on your doorstep as well and the team that, that I support. So... There is, but you, you understand that the, the values of, of what the supporters are after. And, you know, I know a lot of the supporters, I live locally, so, you know, I know what, what it means, the DNA and such, you know, that, you know, it's, it's a hard working town and, and they want the football team to, first and foremost, to see a hard working football team. Jamie, if I, if I come to you for a second, um, we've, we've touched on the squad as a whole um, rather than individual players. Uh, what, what are your impressions of the squad as a, as a staff? How's it been working with them? What's the uh, experience been like trying to get your ideas across? You know, getting to know them on a day-to-day -day basis, both personally and professionally. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, you know, as, as as a group of players, have have shown a real willingness to to work and and, and want to learn. Um, obviously, it's been difficult with injuries that, that we've had that we haven't had the you know a full squad to work with. Um, so you know, from that point, it's been it's been challenging, but. As a whole, yeah, it's been an enjoyable experience. Do you get a, a good impression for them? Are they, they they're trying to obviously take your, you know, your ideas on, trying to build on them, learn from them? When we've when we've had them in, in press conferences and the like, they've always spoken really encouragingly about the ideas you're trying to put on them and, and wanting to take them on and, and grow their games as a result of that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and we've given we've given them a lot of information in the you know the short space of time that, that we that we've been here. Um, and as I said, that there is a real willingness from them to, you know, take them them ideas on board and 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 put them into practice. I guess uh, this is for all of you. Um, Jimmy's touched on the challenges it has of of coming in mid season and not having that runway of a, a pre season there. But these international breaks, the fact that we've managed to finally rob ten minutes with you during this period um, while we've not got games on, 
that that helps you a little bit have that more dedicated time on the training pitch because you know we've, we've spoken to the gaffer about this previously there's no lads are going on holiday you know Dubai for a week or anything like that they've, they've been in here as much if not more than they would for, for game times they've obviously done their recovery they've been looked after but they've been worked as hard as they ever have been out there to, to try and get those ideas on board yeah it is and you know as coaches we want to spend as much time as we possibly can on the grass and that's where we, we you know we could be able to get our, our main body of, of work in and like Jimmy said you know since we've been there we haven't, haven't really had that opportunity you know we haven't had that six weeks of pre-season to you know to implement you know exactly you know exactly what we want so you know pinching these times now during the international breaks to to work is uh, you know vital for us. We also understand the importance of where the situation is at this moment in time you know we and Gaffer as I saying one bleed we all bleed you know it's, in, it's important that you know, we come out of this international break in a stronger position, you know, in terms of, of the squad numbers and, you know, like the lads mentioned before, of getting the, the, the players back, you know, fit, so we've got more options. So, you know, it, you know it, it's not about, you know, time off, it's about time to work, as the, as the lads said, to make sure, like we say, we're in a healthier position. Obviously, I think a couple of weeks ago was was quite tough on the the field for us. Uh, with a couple of games, the, the whole game didn't end the way uh, we wanted to. But there have been some green shoots in in the games where we've seen ideas coming into the fore. Where we've seen, you know, the, the first half against uh, Ipswich, the game against QPR, that, that the way we control that first half an hour. There are signs that the lads, the way they're playing is changing, the way that they're approaching games is changing. Is that the encouragement that you guys are taking on those moments to to try and build on that and make sure that they become nice? minute performances going forward yeah I think it's, it's going to be take time isn't it it's, it's, it's work in progress it's going to take time and the gaffer every time he addresses a player speaks about adding, a, adding another layer and, that, and that's and that's key for us you know the key the key is to keep building um, you know and, and with the injuries that we've had maybe we've had to take a layer off and, 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 and work backwards you know just to try and make sure that we're we're solid and you look at the last the last two or well, the last two and a half performances in terms of the second half against Leeds we probably defended a little bit differently um, you know, and, that, and that's just for the needs of the game. That's trying to trying to be clever and looking at the opposition and how we can strip their threat. Um, whereas maybe the performances you spoke about there, we had maybe players available, um, done work in the week in the build up to that, to you know, for them to be really concerned about our threat. So I think it's just you know just where we're at this moment in time. And, and like Simon said, it's been a perfect opportunity for us this week to get some players back. And you know, hopefully by the time we. If we face our next game, you'll have another three or four players back in and around the squad and, and making that competition for places a little bit more competitive. That's an, it, really encouraging to hear and I'm sure supporters will be encouraged by that as well. I don't want to keep you guys too long. You'll be here later than six if I keep you any longer. But um, last thing I'll ask you then is, is more personally, are you enjoying it so far? Obviously, you, you've not had a lot of time to, to settle or, or anything like that, but the work is, you know, what it is. You guys are dedicated to that. You, you obviously all want to, to coach and, and be here. How has your, your time been so far? Has it been something you're enjoying? Is it you learning what Huddersfield Town's about, learning this environment, being up north, all those sorts of things? Yeah, for, for me, coming back, it's been, fun, you know, like it, it's been good to see how the club's grown. You know, I remember being here as a player and having the, the initial meeting about building the new stadium when we were obviously in the old Leeds Road Stadium and I remember being in the, in the meeting and there were players like Peter Jackson and all and if you know and you and Roberts and we went into the thing and it just seemed like pie in the sky such kind of thing um, and then obviously it developed and things like that obviously I'd moved as a player and then you come back and see, you know, the infrastructure is in place. The training ground's fantastic, you know, in terms of what's on offer. You know, the the, the food from the chefs is is top draw, you know, in terms of. So it's nice to see how how Huddersfield has grown, you know, as a football club in, in that period. While certainly while I've been away from the football club to come back and see, you know, how how it has developed, you know, through those Premier League years and the investment and stuff like that kind of thing and. You know, for us, it'd be great if we could potentially, you know, strive to try and get back there. What about for the rest of you, Jamie? Jimmy Adriano, outsiders coming in for for want of a better phrase, has the impression of the club internally been different to what you might have assumed when you'd obviously been coaching against us in the past? Yeah, I think it's back to Simon up there. I think the infrastructure is very, very good. You know, so I'd not been to the training ground before. I'd not seen the complex. The complex enables us to to do our job to the best of our ability. So. Um, the environment, obviously knowing Simon, 
you know, for the last last 18 months now. First time I've come across Simon really was on a professional basis at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Simon's obviously give us a, a real good insight and a depth insight in terms of Huddersfield Town and what it is as a football club and, and most importantly what it's like as a community. So kind of had that insight before we before we come in the building, but yeah, been really impressed with what's here. Um, I know probably the existing staff and, and the, the new chairman and the new technical director and the CEO probably want to grow the football club, which is, which is music to our ears in terms of, you know, just adding, adding to that improvement and, and development of the football club. It's interesting you, you mentioned existing staff. Jamie, I'll ask you about this. Uh, we've obviously got a number of existing first team staff, academy staff, people around the building who've, who've been here a long time, um, who are obviously specialists in, in their area, be that physical performance, medical, the rest. Um, they obviously must have been a, a huge help to you guys settling in, but doing your day to day roles as well. Yeah, most definitely. You know, like like Jimmy says, there. You know, new coming into coming into the club. Um, again, speaking about the the infrastructure, the the facilities. You know, it enables us to do you know our, our work you know, to the best of our ability. But the staff as well. You know, been been really helpful and welcoming. You know, right from say the chefs. You know, to the cleaners. You know, to the analysis staff, and obviously you know the chairman Mark and and Jake as well. So yeah, it's been a, a real you know real welcoming from from everybody. Perfect. Is there anything else anybody wants to add before we call it a day? Yeah, no, I'd like to add something just quickly. Can I put a call out to any Air, Airbnb owners, please? Because these guys have worked their way around most of Huddersfield and, and surrounding areas, you know, from one place to another place. I won't give any reasons why they're not still in the first place that they're in or in the second place or the third place. But like I say, if anyone's got any place that these guys can stay in, that where the heating works. Cheap. Cheap. <laughs> we expect him to help us, you know, so now he's asking for people to help us. I've got, I got, I got something to add. So you speak about Adriano as a goalkeeper and trying to integrate with the outfield staff. Two Fridays ago at 11.30, well, approximately from about quarter to 10 at night till about 11.30, Adriano was teaching myself and Jamie about the art of defending, but in his pants. <laughs> So, yeah, so we, I mean, we, we do listen to Adriano on his, on his output with outfield players and we had the pleasure of him being in his pants in our living room for about an hour and a half, teaching us how to defend 1v1. Yeah, so it's not just work here, we also work back in the... Uh, <laughs> Hence, in the that's why they're probably not in that Airbnb anymore and they need another one, OK. That's why with the last two games we were more solid, isn't it? Because they listen to me. I really, I really enjoy here and uh, the facility here give me excitement every day we come here, you know, and um, I love what I do. And I think we're going to enjoy as we make things happen. And that's, you know, the, I have that with me. Enjoyment is when you win, when you get results, you understand? And also you have to enjoy daily with people, interact with people and work, you know, and you see people with desire to learn, desire to, to get better. That excited us and bring some kind of enjoyment for us. But we together, we are in the same boat, you know, and we want everybody to enjoy as things turn around and become better and better and better every day. Excellent. I think that's a, a lovely note to leave it on. Thank you all four of you for your time um, and best of luck for the, the next few games coming up.